Now we're going to study how our genes are expressed. So this is the process in which our genotype actually becomes our phenotype and this happens in the process of making proteins. So in reality, our genes, all our genes code for is for the instructions for how to make proteins, how to make the proteins that we use in all our body functions. So because of gene expression, Gene expression is that allows our genotype to become the phenotype. So we have our genes that we inherited from our parents, and those genes code for the phenotype that we will be expressed. So what genes have is the instructions for how to make the proteins that compose the phenotype. Just in essence, gene expression is the process of using the DNA to ultimately produce a trait and this happens by first translating the transcribing the DNA into RNA then that RNA is translated into protein we produce multiple types of proteins and those proteins will interact with each other in different ways depending on the proteins that are being made and create pathways metabolic pathways some proteins also include enzymes which can synthesize all the types of compounds that are not coded in our DNA so like I said we only code for proteins, but proteins can be enzymes that can make lipids or that can make type of carbohydrates, etc. So other compounds can be made because of the instructions in those proteins. So all that creates pathways, metabolic pathways that then lead to what we ultimately see as the phenotype. So all this process from going from the DNA to RNA to the proteins and those proteins interacting together, that is what produces the phenotype. So that is what we call gene expression is mostly referring to this initial part in how the DNA is used to make proteins. And this is what we call the central dogma in biology, which is the information is officially stored in the DNA. This is the part that we pass on from our offspring to our offspring and this is what we receive from our parents so this is how information flows generation to generation but within an individual that information is then used the DNA is used as a template to transcribe into messenger RNA and then that messenger RNA is read by the ribosomes and is translated into proteins so the central dogma is that the information in the DNA is then used to make an RNA transcript which then is translated into protein. We can think of this analogy that the nucleus is like the library of the cell and that is all the information in that that cell needs is inside that library. If you have a nucleus you want to protect that information and it is kept inside of the library. And then inside of that library you find the books which is like the DNA if you're a prokaryote, you don't have a nucleus, but you still have DNA. So that DNA has all the information with all the recipes, all the instructions that the cell needs in order to make all the proteins it needs to function. So all that information is contained in those books. If you're a eukaryote, that information never leaves the nucleus. So those books stay inside of the nucleus or inside of the library. In either case, you don't want to damage those books because that is all the information the cell has. So the DNA is the main, the only source of information for the cell and it has to secure its integrity because it needs that DNA to pass it on to the next cell, the daughter cells. So that DNA is not used directly to make proteins, instead it is transcribed into messenger RNA. So here the analogy is like when you go to the library and you have the books in reserve that you cannot take out of the library, you make a photocopy of that book so that you don't damage the book and you can take those photocopies and then make your recipes anywhere you go. And so the process of translation is using that information in that messenger RNA to make the actual protein. So again, it would be that those copies that you made, you bring home and then you cook the recipe based on those instructions. And here, since this is just a photocopy, it doesn't matter if it gets dirty or damaged because at the end of the day, you're just going to discard it. So you're only going to use that to make a recipe a couple times or a few times and then discard it. So any 
any flaws that are on this on this copy is also not affecting the main uh, books here so the main the DNA is not affected by what happens to this messenger RNA once it goes to translation likewise it is possible that in the photocopying process or in the transcription process you might make a mistake so the copies might not have not, not be perfect but that again is not a big deal because you can just go and make new copies as long as the DNA is correct that's why cells are always checking the integrity of the DNA because if the DNA has a problem then every time you copy it every time you transcribe it you're going to transcribe that problem on the other hand if you make a, a mistake during transcription that is sort of a temporary mistake because say so making a mistake when you make a photocopy you can just go back and make new copies and cells are constantly going through the process of gene expression because gene expression is their way to make all the proteins they need in order to survive so throughout the entire interface cells are constantly making new proteins and proteins don't have a very long life so they need to constantly be making new ones and also the needs of the cell are changing from time to time if if some food source becomes available now the, the cell is going to need the enzymes to break that down or any new challenges that the cell is facing it's going to need new proteins so constantly the cell is going through gene expression throughout all of interface so that is G1, S and G2 the only time the cell cannot do gene expression is during the M phase and this is because at this point in the cycle the chromosomes are so tightly compacted remember that in prophase is the first time that the chromosomes can actually be seen under the microscope because they are so compacted and they're so compacted that they cannot be accessed for transcription so this is the only time where gene expression actually has to stop